How do you add flash to your portraits at night without using crazy long exposures? I'm gonna explain it all on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey everybody, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions. I'm sure that you all watching this video out there, I'm sure you have photography questions, things that have been bugging you, things you don't quite understand, that you want answers to. You can go to askdavidbergman.com, ask your own questions on that site. I just might pick it to answer here on a future show. If you have a question that's something very specific to your particular piece of gear or your business situation or something like that, I also offer one-on-one -on -one photography consultations. You can get more information about that at AskDavidBergman.com as well. And lastly, I hope you're already a subscriber right here on the Adorama YouTube channel. If not, go ahead and click that button down below. Use the little bell icon, click that little bell so you'll be notified as soon as new videos come out all week long right here for you from myself and the other photo hosts on Adorama TV. Today I've got a question sent in from Michael and he wants to know, I want to shoot at night against a skyline so you can see the city lights, like shooting New York City from the Jersey side, but with a model in front. How can I shoot this without having my model hold still for a 30 second exposure? So this is actually a great question. I live in New York City. I've done that kind of photograph exactly. So what I want to do is kind of go through a shoot where I'm going to show you how I dealt with this exact situation. Now, a couple weeks ago, I did a video about balancing flash and daylight exposures. If you didn't watch that, that'll be a good sort of precursor to this video. I'll put a link down below. Make sure you watch that and you're up to speed on how that works because it's basically the same process even if you're shooting at night. Now this particular shoot my friend Chris had flown in from San Diego and she's a Pilates instructor and has a studio out there and she wanted to do a shoot uh, and we had decided to do this with the city skyline in the background. So we did exactly what you talked about, Michael. We went over to the New Jersey side and found a great location there where we had a perfect view of the skyline. Now, I was out there with the Canon EOS R body. This was a couple years ago. I was using the R and I had the RF 51.2 lens. I had a couple lenses out there with me, but that was the lens I was using most of the time. Now, I'm going to start out here showing you what I did uh, throughout the day. I'm going to kind of go through the whole shoot. I'm going to talk about my settings how I did it, and by the time we get to the nighttime part of the shoot, you'll understand exactly what I'm doing. Now, during the day, uh, earlier, before it was like beautiful sunset light, it was sort of the middle of the day, and uh, so what I wanted to do was use flash to overexpose the daylight so that I could make some pictures in good light. I found a nice shady spot to put Chris in there, and I was using the Orlit Rovelight RT610 TTL Monolight. That's an Adorama exclusive brand, so uh, those lights are really, really nice. It's 600 watt seconds of power, so it's going to give me plenty of power to overpower, uh, to compensate for the daylight. And I had that in the Glow Easy Lock 34 inch collapsible silver beauty dish. And again, I'll put links to all this stuff down below. And I was that the good part about that Orlet system is it works with my Canon transmitter. It's on the same radio frequency. So I'm using my regular Canon STE3RT transmitter so that if I want to add in a speed light or something like that, I have no problem. Now, these first couple pictures, um, you can see these are in daylight. And again, I have Chris in sort of a shady spot so that, again, if you watched that video a couple weeks ago, you know how this works. You want to darken down the ambient that's on your subject while leaving the background exposed and then, and then bring your flash in to balance those two exposures. And so I did that here so it... Uh, you know, I've got that nice, pretty sort of model light, um, you know, studio quality light on Chris for these outdoor photographs while the background is perfectly lit at daylight. Uh, my settings here, I'm at 100 ISO, 200th of a second at F11. Now, in hindsight, I could have done what I talked about in last week's video and used either high speed sync or a neutral density filter to actually shoot more wide open and throw that background more out of focus. But I just chose, I, we were far enough away from the background and I wanted to have the full power available to me on that flash without going to high speed sync. So, uh, cause I knew we'd be shooting all day long and I, I had one extra battery, but I just wanted to be safe. So, uh, so that's how I shot it and those pictures came out fine. Then throughout the day, we, I wanted a bunch of different looks. So as the sun started to set, when it was direct and it was coming down with that nice orange, beautiful light, I basically used no flash 
And these next batch of pictures, uh, these next couple frames are just available light. The sun is back over my shoulder and hitting her directly. Of course, it's also lighting up the city skyline there with that beautiful wash of orange light. It's very directional. It's very hard light because it's a small light source. The sun is very big, but it's so far away that it's going to be a small light source relative to the subject. So that was that look, right? We wanted some action shots. So I had pushed up my shutter speed there to 3200th of a second. I'm still at F2 and I'm at 200 ISO. So that way I was able to freeze her. I could have her running and jumping and doing those kinds of things. So then as the sun started to set, I wanted to get her in front of the skyline now and the light on the city was starting. It was, there was a little bit of sunlight still hitting the city, but it really was going fast. If you've ever shot in what we call, you know, magic hour, right? Those last five or 10 minutes as the sun is setting, it goes really fast. And there were some buildings back behind me. So as soon as the sun gets behind those buildings, there's gonna be no sun on my subject. So what I did was I pulled out my Canon speed light in that case and I, I, I set it up very high on a stand, kind of as high as I could get it, maybe 10 or 12 feet in the air. And I backed it up as far as I could where I felt like I could still get enough power out of that. And I basically shot raw, uh, bare bulb light straight out of that thing to mimic the sun. I, put, I also put a CTO gel, which is an orange colored gel, over that strobe to do the best I could to mimic that setting sunlight. Basically, if I don't have the setting sun, I'm gonna do what I can to, to create that sun in my photograph. So even though you can see the, the sky, uh, the city skyline is not being lit by the sun. There's a little bit of color there because it's dusk. And so there's a little bit of color behind the buildings, but she is being lit basically as if the sun was still hitting her. So that was really nice uh, as well. So you can see now we've gotten already a few different looks just in the course of a couple hours here with um, just by changing the way I was lighting that. So that worked out really well. Now, then we get to Michael where, uh, you know, your question starts. And the thing is, the thing about shooting at nighttime, you talk about a 30 second exposure. You don't have to shoot 30 seconds to get a decent exposure of a nighttime shot. Now you can do that. If you want to shoot at a closed down aperture at something like F8, F11, and at a very low ISO, like 100, you may be talking longer exposures. You're still probably talking, from my experience, a second or two seconds at that in that case. But the advantage of having wider lenses, in this case, I had the F2 lens, is I'm able to open up all the way and I can keep my ISO relatively low and still have a decent shutter speed. So what I do in that situation, how I approach that, is the first thing I want to do, just like with any fill flash shot where I'm trying to balance with the background is I want to shoot my background first and just like a test frame and just see what the exposure is. So here's a shot of, first I did one of the city skyline and then I decided we were going to move actually and face a different direction. So I actually had that beautiful um, orange light that was coming from just after dusk and that beautiful blue hour light. So, um, so I basically did just a test shot of that. And this frame is actually at ISO 400 at 100th of a second at F2. Now this is right at the beginning of this shoot and the light is gonna get darker and darker as we go, but that's perfectly manageable at F2 at 100th of a second at 400 ISO. Now, if I didn't have an F2 lens, for every stop I have to go up, obviously I would have to either raise my ISO up or slow down my shutter speed. Um, so, but here's the thing. So, and then by the way, this was with, I was shooting this with that Orlet in the Glow uh, Beauty Dish. And then I also had a second speed light off to the side, sort of as a rim light, so she, I could separate her from the background a little bit more. And you can actually see here in this frame that where the Beauty Dish uh, shot, the big Glow Beauty Dish, that didn't fire on this one frame. I was just setting up that speed light and you can see what that speed light is doing and actually what the exposure is without the flash, with the model in place and without the flash, you can see exactly what it is. Now, by this point, the um, light had dropped a little bit, so I had, all I have to do at this point is keep slowing my shutter speed as the light drops. So at this point, I'm at a 30th of a second. Um, and then as she was in there and I was photographing her, 
as the light was dropping, by slowing down my shutter speed, I'm able to bring up more of that background light. It doesn't change the flash exposure on my model. And again, I've talked about this in other videos, how that works, but the shutter speed is the only thing that's gonna affect, it's gonna affect my background, but not affect the flash on that's hitting Chris there. So, um, so as I'm slowing the shutter down, as the light is getting darker and the sun is dropping even more, at this, for these final two shots, I was at one eighth of a second. That's as slow as I had to go um, with this particular shoot. Now, again, if I didn't have an F2 lens, I might have had to, if I had a 2.8 lens, I would have had to go half that at a quarter of a second. If I was shooting with, a, let's say, a kit lens that was 5.6, that would be uh, a one second exposure, right? Now, here's the thing, though. I'm hand holding this, I'm not on a tripod. If I was on a tripod, the background would be more frozen. You can see those lights in the background are, there's a little bit of motion on those because I'm hand holding, even in an eighth of a second, that's a long time to hand hold. Obviously, if it was a second, those lights would be moving even more. But here's the trick about using flash at night. Here's the thing to understand. All that determines, what determines the uh, exposure on the model, the shutter speed basically on the model is the duration of your flash. And the flash duration, the amount of time that light is on is actually very short. So in this case, I didn't measure it. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's probably like a thousandth of a second. A two th it's a very short flash duration. So the, the places where she's being hit by the light is frozen solid her face, most of her body, all of that is being frozen solid. The background, again, you can see that motion because I'm not lighting that with the flash. That's just the ambient light. But because she is in a darker area than that background, I'm able to light her up with the flash. Now, where you will see some motion is what we call ghosting. You'll see some ghosting around the subject. So if I zoom in here on her uh, on her hat, you can see where there is some motion, but the that motion there is not necessarily a bad thing. It really doesn't bother me. The bottom line is you don't have to shoot a 30th of a second to make a picture exactly like the one you asked about. So thanks very much for asking that question. I hope that helps everybody else as well. Remember, uh, go to askdavidbergman.com to ask your own photo questions. Uh, if you like this video, hit that like button. Hopefully uh, you're already subscribed and you are using the bell to get notifications. Remember, I've got a new question every week. I'll be back here next Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern. I hope you'll join me right here on Ask David Bergman.